He is the only Kenyan celebrity who was chosen to live far away from the hustle and bustle of the big city life. While most of other celebrities enjoy the flashy scenes of Nairobi, he prefers the peace and quiet of his village. We'll have it in our memory, ready? Oh my god, so sad. So sad. Which is a good 434 kilometers away from the capital city of Kenya. But there is more to him than just his preference for rural life. Some people accuse him of being involved in a secret society like Freemason, claiming his wealth came from the occultic people. However, he maintains that the source of his wealth is related to his frequent travels. So much. <laughs> My job is to travel. How, how is your job to travel? If I don't travel, hey, you don't make money. I don't make money, I lose. His name is Frederick Mara. People speculate that he's keeping some big secrets, especially since he's not one to show up in public often. How could a guy from the village afford to build a palace and influence others to do the same? Born in November 1990, Frederick grew up in the Kuria region near the Kenya-Tanzanian border. Details about his early life are scarce, but it seems he faced the typical challenges of growing up in a struggling family in rural Kenya. Despite his humble beginnings, Frederick Mara proved to be a bright student, attending Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology where he earned a degree in actual science around 2016. Driven by his ambition to become wealthy, Frederick worked odd jobs, including selling second-hand shoes at the Kikomba market for a profit. Because we had just finished school, I was selling shoes in the streets of Nairobi. I was buying shoes in Gekomba, taking them to Juja. I studied in Jeku at Juja. So, you know, I was trying to figure out myself and I was also waiting to graduate, you know, once you finished school and we didn't leave the environment we were brought up in school, so we stayed around the university. And all, all my boys, we were like 10 of us. So I used to say, I used to have my own room and in a different building closer to the big place where we used to gather. And these boys had like a, a three bedroom house and all the boys we used to, to converge there and talk and talk and talk and just say our dreams. He also landed a gig as a salesperson at a bank in Nairobi, earning a monthly salary of at least $120 a month. Dressed sharply, he roamed the streets of Nairobi signing up new customers for the bank. However, he eventually lost this job, leaving him without steady employment. In his social media posts, you can see the journey of a man who's faced challenges in life starting as a hawker, then a salesperson, and finally rising to become Kenya's highest paid YouTuber. After getting fired, Mara seized an employment opportunity in Colombia through a friend. Even though he barely had the necessary documents, he took a big risk by selling his belongings to fund his strip. Once in Colombia, Mara worked as an English teacher while filming videos of his experiences in the streets sharing them with his friends back in Kenya and occasionally posting them on his YouTube channel. They want me to, to take empanada. Yeah. With a with empanada. Empanada for you? For you. Okay. One okay. Empanada. Yes. One empanada. They want me to have some empanada. She's so cute. Yeah, she's my friend. And they want to have like 15? Though the earnings from these videos weren't enough to sustain him, he kept going. However, tragedy struck when he lost his job and ended up homeless in the streets of Colombia. And even with his visa cancelled. With no other option, he turned to YouTube, posting videos of Colombia's nightlife to make ends meet. Stuff. Yes. So one time in Colombia, this is a story of another day, I was homeless. So I lost everything. I lost, I lost, you know, when uh, I lost my job and this job was attached to my visa. So I lost my job and my visa was canceled and I was given like two weeks either to leave Colombia, mostly that was the most definite, or look for a way I could stay in Colombia and legally. You understand? So that time I was making money on YouTube a little bit. That's when I realized, no, 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 no. 
Now I have to focus on this thing. Transitioning to full-time YouTuber status, Mara now portrays himself as a globe trotter, having visited over 50 countries and showcasing diverse cultures on his channel. He earns his livelihood through his travels, with each journey contributing to his wealth. Through his success, he's been able to build a mansion for his mother and is currently constructing his palace in the village, a project costing over a hundred thousand US dollars, almost 10 million Kenyan shillings. To be honest, the finances don't quite add up when it comes to traveling, considering the expenses involved. Now let me explain how Frederick makes his money through traveling. You see, whenever he shares his videos on YouTube, he earns revenue from ads placed within these videos. But the burning question is, how much does he actually earn per month? According to a reliable source close to Frederick, he makes at least 12 million Kenyan shillings a month from YouTube. This can be attributed to the international viewership his videos attract, which generates more income thanks to Google's RPM revenue per mile. A quick search for his YouTube channel on Social Blade reveals that Frederick Marwa is the highest paid YouTuber from Kenya, ranking 438th globally in the travel category. With 526,000 subscribers, Marwa generates almost 76,000 US dollars, which is equivalent to 10 million Kenyan shillings a year from YouTube. That's at least 1,500 USD a week, translating to approximately 196,000 Kenyan shillings per week and nearly 786,000 shillings a month. However, it is worth noting that Social Blade's analysis is based on estimations. So Frederick Marwa might actually be earning more than these quoted figures. With such substantial earnings, Marwa has built a lavish palace in Nyabohanse, his village. However, this construction sparked a heated debate among villagers, with many claiming his wealth was as a result of occultism. Marwa disclosed that some of his fellow villagers accused him of being involved in cultism, particularly Freemasonry, and even suggested he had recruited others into this alleged system. The situation got pretty intense, so the local chief decided to call a meeting to clear up the rumors and get things straight. But Mara stood his ground and denied all the accusations against him. He made it clear that he had faith in God and didn't harbor any ill will towards Freemasons. Interestingly, Marwa has wielded his influence to turn his village into a hotspot for YouTubers. He's even persuaded his brother, sister, and mother to start their own YouTube channels, and they are raking in millions each month. Not stopping there, he's encouraged other villagers like Mayuguno to follow suit. <laughs> Wow. I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. Give me. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Okay. Are you gonna? This is your gamble. Stop, stop gamble. Wait, 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 my you Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Two minutes. You come back with looking no. new, brand new. Yes. Brand new, my you In the app on your mobile, change arakala. Change arakala. And despite his wealth, Mara chooses to stay in the village with his family instead of moving into the city like other Kenyan celebrities. He prefers spending his time wandering around the lush surroundings of his lavish palace, which cost him pretty penny to build. He lives a simple life and stays away from scandals and rarely flaunts his wealth on social medias like other Kenyan celebrities who would flaunt their earnings and monies on social medias. In fact, if you bumped into him on the streets, you would never guess he is a billionaire. He's decided to keep his wealth under wraps from the public eye. Wow, your house that is crazy. People are saying that you're building a whole church yes, for a house. It looks like a mall. I want even people to be landing with choppers on, on the roof. 
on yes. the roof. Yes. Right now, because right now it's just the first slab, the first, second. That's the that's how the plan of the house is. Yes. Yes. So and the roof of the house, mm. everything is a slab. So helicopters will be landing right there. So if you are coming Jalango, you don't have even to look for these potholes. Yes, you just fly there. And land on top uh, of your house. Just, just land, bro. Yeah, this is very possible. Why How much has it costed you up to now? I don't like talking about money that much, but I'll say around a hundred thousand US dollars. That's around ten million. Yes. Yani, this guy is rich, but you'll never see him making noise on social media. <laughs> anyway, what are your thoughts? Leave your thoughts on our comment section. That is it for now. Thanks for watching. Let's me next time. Bye bye.